Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Roger Paul, and tonight we're going to continue our study of the seven Supreme Spirit groups. And tonight uh, we're on section five. We might actually finish this tonight. I don't know. Uh, section five, the seven spirits of the circuits, and that's on page 202.4 of the original book. And just in case Millie doesn't show up in the next few minutes, uh, Millie, if you're watching this video, Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Millie. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, <laughs> Millie. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's say a little prayer and we'll get started. Father, thank you. Uh, let's get started, I should say. Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for bringing us together for this wonderful revelation. We pray that you open our hearts and minds that we might share it with others and remember a little bit of it. Prepare us for what's to come in the next life. We thank you for this. We give you the praise, and we say this in the name of your son, Michael Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. 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 All right. The seven spirits of the circuits. Let's see who's on top. Gary, you're on top tonight, so you get to start. Persecution. Here I come early. Okay. Look what you do to me. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Hold on. Let me get you size so I can see this thing, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, the seven spirits are uh, the seven spirits of circuits. Yes. Okay. Uh, the seven spirits of Havona circuits are the joint impersonal representation of the infinite spirit and the seven master spirits to the seven circuits of the central universe. They are the servants of the master spirit, whose excellent offspring, uh, whose collective offspring they are the master spirits provide a distinct and diversified administrative individuality to the seven super universes through these uni through these uniform spirits of the havona circuits they are enabled to provide a unified uniform, uniform uh -huh, unified and uniform Yep. Yeah, and coordinated spiritual supervision of the central universe. Okay, so the seven uh, spirits of the Havona circuits, each one of the seven spirits of the Havona circuits was created by the supreme being and one of the master spirits. So there's one for each of the seven spirits. So each one of these master spirits in this picture and the infinite spirit along with the supreme created the, a su supreme spirit for each uh, of these circuits, circuit one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right. The interesting part about this is they're all uniform. In other words, they're just alike all the way through. But even though they are created, each one by a separate master spirit. OK, uh, so. This gives the seven circuits a just like the ancients of days gives uh, administration to all seven super universes these seven spirits gives administration and direction to all the spirits of each and every Havona circuits and what are we talking about we're talking about i'm going to go down past this next paragraph a little bit we're talking about this billion worlds of Havona and i wanted to show you all something in the topical index this is the seven supreme uh, spirits you know what i did and i skipped off the page i wanted to show you all if it go back one here we go all right here we go the seven this is from the the topical index and you'll notice there's a little thing on each one of the havona circuits i wanted what i wanted to point out to you notice that the first circuit now this would be the one that's closest to the paradise trinity right the first circuit comprises of 35 million worlds OK, that's what's surrounding. That's what these these little things here. So this is the first circuit. So this circuit, all these planets are like in line around. Uh, Havon, I mean, around. This 21 satellites in paradise and these being in line, they go in a perfect order around 
seven there's seven orders of them and each one of them surrounds uh, paradise and the 21 satellites so on the first circuit here is 35 billion planets you see that mm -hmm. then what i wanted to show you it doesn't break down every single one of the circuits but on the seventh circuit there's it compromises of 245 million worlds what did I say, billion just a minute ago? I meant million. Million worlds. 35 millions on the first circuit and 245 million on the seventh circuit. So if you look at this picture, the seventh circuit down here at the bottom has 245 million planets in it. So these all are more planets as you go down in, in the in an ascending order, there's more and more planets with each circuit. You follow me? So it each circuit makes sense. Well, I'm doing it as a here's heaven, say okay. Yeah, paradise. circuit one. Circuit it's closest. two. Yeah. Okay, then then we'll go on out and like we're number eight or you know or eight. Yeah, we're on the super universe. We're, we're actually get, we're actually what? outside of all these circuits. Yeah, theory. okay, but why do the planets keep increasing with each circuit? Because it's bigger. As you go out farther, there's more space, so that's where there's more, that's why there's more planets. Okay, I was thinking heaven, circuits, planets. Right. For some reason, I was, I don't know. The planets it, are in the circuit. I came the early, that's are the excuse. Circuit. Well, the planets yeah. are the circuits, right? And then outside of that is the seven super universes. Okay, outside all seven circuits. So there's planets within in the circuits. Yeah. And yeah, that... there's planets, heaven, planets, circuits, the super universes. Right. That's correct. Okay. okay. Now are, that explains are all more. these planets in inhabited? Every single one. Every of single one of them is inhabited. Right. Yeah, this is know... a perfect universe. Okay. All right. The central and it, is there progressive spirituality as you go in? Yeah, you start on the seventh, the first planet on the seventh circuit, and you progress through every single planet until you get to the very last one on and, the first circuit. And, and then, my God, how many reincarnations is that? That's just one. That's well, it's it's a couple spiritual uh, incarnations, but it's really just one because you're a spirit being by that time. By the time you go to after you leave the local universe, you're a uh, first stage spirit. By the time you get through all seven of the seven circuits, you are a sixth stage spirit as you get closer and closer and closer. You graduate through the planets so how many michael have to go through all of these you have to go through every no, did, single did michael michael yes all the creator son, all the creator sons did this in the beginning even okay. the first michael roger even the first michael mm -hmm. yes yeah okay so they've experienced that's why they've been around billions of years you know by the time our michael uh even started his local universe it had been what 4.5 billion years or something like that that's a lot of time if you think about it really so i had is. a question roger yeah where they talk about the impersonal representatives what do they mean by impersonal is that something material it, no it's it's impersonal but because the personality of these seven that's a good question impersonal like, yes yeah yeah the reason they're impersonal the personality that they have is the reflection of the master spirit that created them. Okay. 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 So that's why they say impersonal. That's why they call them uniform, uh, unified, uniform, coordinated. In other words, they all act and move as the same, but they have different uh, personality variations because they were created by the variation of the master spirit itself. This comes back to the, the the seven possibilities of the combination of the trinity right? right so master spirit number one would be in circuit number one and who would he be who would he have his personality like the father the father master spirit number two what do you think that is the, the son. son 
number mother three, spirit. the mother spirit. That's right. And it goes on and on to the all, all seven of the combinations. Okay. Pretty uniform, isn't it? Now, this is a perfect universe. When it was created, all billion of these planets were created at the same time. Okay, and when they were, it was created perfectly and the beings that were created to inhabit them were created perfectly. I'm sorry. So, so you said the impersonal representatives were, were what again, Roger? The spirit, the, the, uh, the, the, the spirits themselves, the seven spirits of the circuit. Now they are not the same as the master spirit. The master spirit created the seven spirits. The, pl the planet, correct? The little spear. That's what no. we're talking about. No, we're talking about master spirit one through seven. Okay. They are beings, right? Yes. And they have <clears throat> underneath them the seven supreme executives. And along ha with having the seven supreme executives, they have these seven master spirits that take care of everything in Havona, okay? But here's the caveat. When the seven master spirits were created and the seven circuits of Havona were all created pretty much probably simultaneously, these seven master, or the seven spirits of the Havona circuits were all created at the same time as this. So Havona was never created without these beings. They were all created at the same time. You follow me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. They created didn't need to perfection. evolve. They didn't the have to evolve. The inhabitants of these nothing. that didn't need to evolve. This was the preparation by creating Havona and all the inhabitants. It was the, cre it was the preparation for whom? Grand Fonda, the very first ascender. Okay on the very first super universe, okay? So she was the first one to die? He was the first one to die and go through the mansion worlds and go on to Havona. Isn't that it, of this world though? No, not of this world. That was of the first, yeah, first super number universe. Number one. Your first yeah, super. number one. Was that, okay, number one world or? The number one, probably the number one world on the number one super universe, yeah. Okay, I thought that was in... Fauna was the first human on Earth. No, and her and her brother. No, that no. You're thinking of the twins. Yeah. Right. I don't know if they were twins or. Yeah, not. yeah. No, that you're talking. Talk, you're thinking of the first human beings. No, that's that's. Yeah, two that's what I was beings. thinking. Yeah, no, they're not. This this is not them. They'll, we're going to talk about Ground <laughs> Fonda in a second here. All okay, right. I'll wait for the next paragraph. All right, all right. Let's go down here. Uh, it's not in the next one. It's the one after that, I think. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Jane, would you take the seven, the next one? 17.52. Yes, the seven spirits of the circuits are each limited to the permeation of a single Havona circuit. They are not directly concerned with the regimes of the eternals of days the rulers of the individual Havona worlds, but they are in liaison with the seven supreme executives and they synchronize with the central universe presence of the supreme being. Their work is wholly confined to Havona. Okay, there's about three different things that's very important in this paragraph. First, they are not concerned with the regimes of the Eternals of Days. Who are the Eternals of Days? The Eternals of Days are the ruling administrative class of Havona. Okay. It's not the Emmanuel's though. Huh? No, no. No, it's, no. it's not. The Eternal of Days are separate beings and there's one for every single individual billion worlds of Havona. So there's a billion Eternals of Days. Okay. They're not concerned with the administrative affairs of the planets, okay? But they are concerned with doing the will of the seven supreme executives, okay? And they are uh, concerned with the synchronization of the central universe with the, supreme, uh, the presence of the supreme being. Now, why would that be? 
because the supreme being is doing what? Collecting all experience from every single individual. So as we go through the worlds of Havona, all of our experience goes to whom? The supreme being, right? A duplicate of it. So who is the representative of the supreme being right now? The master spirit, spirit of the seventh universe. Yes, ma'am. You got it. See? Well done, Jane. We studied, we studied that. That's here. right. That's right. So everything that goes through Havona as experience, right, has to do what also? It has to go through master spirit number seven right now because master spirit number seven is the vice gerent of the supreme being right now right hey roger i had a question yeah how would you label the eternal days are they like celestial beings super universe personalities or angels or no they're they're administrative rulers of the havona worlds okay in other words you would think and i kind of it's this is a bad rep, uh, example but we would think of them more along the Jabba Kalagasa planetary princes, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. Because planetary princes are supposed to rule the planet. Well, the Eternals of Days rules the planets of the Havona circuits. Okay, literally. So what they say goes. They have the last world word, right? Okay, so this is just a picture of the seven circuits of the world surrounding the planet. All right, let's go on to the next one. Diane, would you take the next one here? The hang, on, hang on, dear. I lost my mouse. These spirits of the circuits make contact with those who sojourn in Havona through their personal offspring, the tertiary sopranophon. While the circuits or the circuit spirits are coexistent with the seven master spirits, their function in the creation of the tertiary um, tertiary supernathan did not attain major importance until the first pilgrims of time arrived on the outer circuit of Havona in the days of Grand Fonda. Okay, a couple things about this. Notice here it says, uh, the spirits of the circuits make contact with those who sojourn in Havona and their personal offspring, the tertiary supernathan. Now, here we see the hierarchy of the super angels again, right? Now, the su tertiary supernophim are the angels along with the omniophim, okay? The omniophim and the tertiary supernophim are the angels of the Havona circuits, okay? So that's why the tertiary supernophim are the offspring of the circuits, each one of them. Okay, so all the angels that's going to help us out with our experience as we go through the Havona circuits will be Omniophim and Tertiary Supernophim. Okay, remember who was the angels of the super universe? Sakonophim, right? Who was the angels of the local universe? Seraphim. Seraphim. So that covers all the hierarchy of the angels all the way up through Havona, right? Seraphim, Sakonophim for the super universe, and then we have the Tertiophim and Omniophim in the Havona circuits. All right. Okay. And it basically says here that these angels didn't have much importance until when? The first pilgrims of time arrived in the outer circuit of Havona in the days of Grand Fonda. So Grand Fonda landed on the very first planet eons and eons and eons ago, the first one to arrive. And when he arrived, that kicked in what? The tertiary supernophim had a job then to do. Make sense? Hey, Roger, were there other references where I could find the word circuit spirits? Or is this the only reference yeah, in 17? Yeah you, can, you can, yeah, you can go to the topical index and look under, uh, if you'll just look up, I think the Havona. Havona, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, 
that'll take you to a lot of these things and all these have links so you can link to all these all these different topics and look them up if you want to okay. that's very helpful all right grand okay, fonda. You can, I, grand I fonda. looked it up yeah grand fonda the first ascendant mortal to reach uh bona yeah okay he was a pilgrim from a planet in the super universe number one mm. yep so it tells me they kind of named the first person they used the same yeah fonda for every yep. everybody but maybe change some Henry Fonda or Jane Fonda. Or, <laughs> you know, uh, and, but, but who was our Fonda you know, didn't, wasn't speaking, of, she had speaking of Henry Fonda, I saw a Western the other day on TV I'd never seen before. It's called The Deputy. And Henry Fonda play, stars in this along with this other guy. Uh, and it was about the same time that Gunsmoke and, you know, Rolls Fargo and those kind of stuff started. I thought it was real inter interesting that Henry Fonda was in it you know, on TV because I didn't mm -hmm. even know he made any TV stuff, just movies. All right. Uh, but right here under Grand Fonda, it also says he's the acting head of the core of finality now mm. since he was the first one to go through. Right. He's the chief of the Supreme Council of Destiny. Destiny. Um, says the uh, first mortal attain Havona space reports of glory inaugurated upon his arrival. So it was a big celebration when he first showed up, right? I wonder how long it took him to go through all that. Oh, who knows? Probably millions and oh, millions yeah. of years. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he probably uh, saw a dirt being created, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tim, would you take the next one sure. as you advance? As you advance from circuit to circuit in Havona, you will learn of the spirit, spirits of the circuits, but you will not be able to hold personal communion with them, even though you may personally enjoy and recognize the impersonal presence of their spiritual influence. So you won't actually be able to commune with the spirits of the circuits, but you will be able to commune with whom? The tertiary supernofem, right? Which is their children. All right. Um, so may I make this clear? Yeah heaven the circuits uh the tw heaven uh, the 21 satellites don't forget the 21 satellites that go around heaven or paradise right yeah and then you've got uh bona but basically once we start ascending uh -huh. okay these sir sir uh, per are equate equal to our earthly angels yes you got it Hit it right I am starting head. to get this stuff. It all makes Jane, sense. You may not be the only one. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all starts to come together sooner or later, right? <laughs> I, I know one in a million, Gary. What? <laughs> I just get very lucky, lucky every now and then. <laughs> What's that? I just get lucky every now and then. I thought Gary, you were saying I was getting lucky yeah. every now and then. <laughs> Gary, believe me, it's Gary, it's it's a lot to learn, man. I'll tell you. It is. <laughs> it's tough. No oh, easy way to do it. Time I'm confused. It. Oh man, yeah. it's tough. You know, guys, it, it kind of reminds you of this. You know why there's so many mansion worlds and so many circuits and so many things that we have to go through? Because it takes us this long to figure all this stuff out. I mean, you Roger, know? I don't even know how you do it, man. It's just, wow. I mean, you've been wow. reading since 73, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're putting like everything together. I'm like, man, I'm still kind of like lost. <laughs> <laughs> just experience. That's all. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, Roger, your, your performance, your knowledge is safe for me ever over yes. taking you yes, whatsoever. Indeed. By the time I got to your level of knowledge and experience, I would be rivaling Methuselah. <laughs> Not necessarily, <laughs> Gary. That's what I used to think of some of the guys. Let me tell you all a little story, just a side note. Uh, when I started reading this book, I had this guy, and honest to God, y'all, I've been trying to remember his name for 40 years. He was kind of this unusual person that came down to key west six months out of the year all right and i was that's where i was stationed so he was the one that gave me the book after i was out preaching you know i was a good good old baptist you know trying to 
preached the, the Baptist way of life. And after a revival at a college, he walks up to me and hands me this book, you know, this big blue book and tells me, I think you're ready for this. And I said, what is this? You know, and I probably have told you all the story. I took it home, threw it on the shelf, didn't even look at it for two weeks. And my roommate, who was a Buddhist, uh, taught karate with me. And he, he came out one morning, was sitting at the kitchen table reading the Urantia book. And he says, have you read this? And I said, no. He, I said, some guy gave it to me at the end of a revival the other day. And he says, you need to read this. <laughs> So that's how my journey started. But the interesting part is this. When I started reading it, I used to run down. He used to stay in a VW van. You know, remember the VW van? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's where he lived when he wow. was down in Key West six months out of the year. And he was a guard at night for this beach property. And so in the mornings, I'd go down sometimes and knock on his van and I said, you got to answer a question for me. So this is how I started. And he was like me back then because he knew the book cold. I mean, it was just unreal. So I could ask him anything. So all of us turn into these teachers as we move on. But you know? Roger, if I had a question, if, if you really wanted to be good because you've been there as a beginner, right? Did yeah. you feel kind of the hopelessness, but how did you persevere? Just you kept reading, but it does take some intelligence, right? Or yeah, it takes yeah. perseverance for but sure. But I mean, what kind I mean, of tips would you give, you know, a beginner um, to really get good at it? What do you have to do? Just basically read it or read it and stick to it and never stop asking questions to everyone okay. that you know that knows anything because that's what we're here for is to share with each other. Sure. Right. And everything you get from everybody may not be exactly right, but it, it, it's an opinion, at least, you know. And if you think about it, when I teach this book, I'm giving my opinion of it. That, and that's as good as it goes. I mean, some angel may come up to you when you get to the mansion world and says, hey, this guy didn't know what he's talking about. You know, this is the way it really is, you know. So you have to take it with a grain of salt, but it helps because it helps put your picture together, you know, all the parts together. And that's the hardest part. And it just takes perseverance, you know, well, and well, intellectual right, yeah. stamina. I keep telling people mm. you have to have intellectual stamina to read this book and get through it. You do. How because much time did you spend like when you first started out reading it? Oh, gosh, Tim, I spent three or four hours every single day. Wow. Yeah. Every Jeez, single that's day. good. Yeah. Because hmm. um, I was studying to be a minister, you know, so yeah. I studied in the Bible at the same time and this at the same time. And I was going back and forth and back and forth. And the more I read the Urantia book, I, I, the more I realized some of the things in the Bible. Yeah, Bible that's what happened to me. Yeah. Wrong. It took me yeah. three years. Yeah. To, because I would I would be doing research on other religions and hey, yeah. you know, that's in the Uranch book. And, and the Uranch book is always and constantly answering my questions. And yeah. it took me like three years just to finally in 2011, I, I found it in 2008. And in 2011, I thought, you know what, I just I can't deny it. anymore. this is what I want to commit to. This is what yeah. I want to dedicate myself to. Yeah. It but infects you, your yeah. soul. Yeah, it infects your soul. And you get to the point where you can't get away from it you really can it, the truth is the truth and it just infects you did you right, make let's go. highlights and notes too oh gosh i got yeah. a bible that's just it's red black blood blue purple green all these different mm -hmm. colors where i would highlight it and write the reference for the urantia book in it and i did that for years oh wow so. okay Roger, let's go on to this. yeah i want to tell you one thing flip wilson when he was here he had a show and he'd always say, the devil made me do it. <laughs> yeah. When I go over on the other side, I'm going to say, Roger made me do it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. That's Let's an original, to... Gary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, who's up next? Uh, Jane, I think you're up next. Really? Okay. No, I th I'm sorry, Jane. I don't want to you uh, serve you, but I was you, Gary. I was. Were you up next, you, Gary? I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, okay. I was. Remember, I stumbled into the place early. Okay. Like a drunk. Um, okay. What? Where are we at? No. Uh, the circuits are advanced, related. Huh? Uh, oh, right? as, oh. You oh. as you advance. As you advance. As no, you I advance. read that, Roger. We're at no, seventeen five five. Seventeen five five. The circuits are okay. related. Okay. 
The spirit circuits are related to the native inhabitants of Havona, much as the thought adjusters are related to the mortal creatures inhabiting the worlds of the evolutionary universes. Like the thought adjusters, the circuit spirits are impersonal. They consort with the perfect minds of Havona beings, much as the imperfect spirits of the universal father and dwell in the infinite minds of mortal man but the spirits of circuits never become a permanent part of the of ona personalities oh i even understand so, that mm, i got it yeah now. yeah the third Roger, thought yeah. adjusters are impersonal oh. right you give them personality the circuits of the spirits are impersonal the Havona natives give them personality, but they don't ever fuse with them, okay? That's because we already have the personality, and we already fused with uh, the thought adjusters, hopefully. That's right. That's See? right. That's right. So you, it's not that Jane, difficult. Jane, we're, we're doing it? well. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you never become a, per a, per a permanent part with them, or neither does the local inhabitants. Okay, number six, the local universe creative spirits. Um, am I losing it? I am. Jane, would you take the next one? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> six, the local universe creative spirits. Much that pertains to the nature and function of the local universe creative spirits properly belongs to the narrative of their association with the creator sons in the organization and management of the local creations. But there are many features of the pre-local universe experiences of these marvelous beings, which may be narrated as part of this discussion of the seven supreme spirit groups. Okay, just like the seven supreme spirit groups, the creative mother spirits much have a close association with the creator sons, just like the seven supreme spirit groups has an association with the master spirits. You follow me? Yeah. That's what they're saying here. Okay. And so they're going to relate some of the things of the, the local universe creative spirits, and it kind of fits in this discussion. All right, Diane, would you take the first one? Take that two paragraphs there, dear, because it's, it's kind of together. We are conversant with six phases of the career of a local universe mother spirit, and we speculate much concerning the probability of a seventh stage of activity. These different stages of existence are, one, initial paradise differentiation. When a creator son is personalized by the joint action of the universal father and the eternal son, simultaneously, there occurs in the person of the infinite spirit, what is known as a supreme reaction of complement. We do not comprehend the nature of this reaction, but we understand that it designates an inherent modification of those personal, personalizable possibilities, which are embraced within the creative potential of the conjoint creator. The birth of a coordinate creator son signalizes the birth within the person of the infinite spirit of the potential of the future local universe consort of this paradise son. We are not cognizant of this new pre-personal identification of entity, but we know that this fact finds place on the paradise records of the career of such a creator son. All right, this is so important. I can't, uh, I don't even know where to start on it. It's that, it's that important, all right. Th they're talking about here the six <laughs> of the seven stages of the career of a local universe mother spirit, 700,000 of them, right? Actually, there's a million of them, but 700,000 are in use right now, okay? So 300,000, we don't know what they're gonna be used for yet, but, when the universal father and the eternal son comes together and creates a creator son, there occurs in the infinite spirit what's known as the supreme reaction of complement. So what would this mean? That means 
all three parts of the Trinity has some input into the creation. Do you see that? All three parts of the Trinity. Okay. So the two, first two parts, the universal father and the eternal son creates the son. The third part, the infinite spirit creates the opposite or the complement of that son by creating the local universe mother spirit. So she becomes a reality at the same exact moment as the creator son is created. And for some reason, the union of days of that local universe has the exact same number, right? Mm -hmm. And the union of days, what is that representing? the Trinity itself, all three of them. Remember that from previous stuff? Mm -hmm. So at the same moment of reaction, the eternal son, or the, the creator son is created, the infinite, I mean, the local universe mother spirit is created, and apparently the union of days is created just a moment before these two things happen, okay? You're talking about projection. the number? Okay. So it's interesting here, they, the number, yes, 2001, I believe it is. All right. The union of days is 211,121. Jesus's number is 211,121. Guess what the local universe mother spirit's number is? 211,121. Mm -hmm. All of them created simultaneously. All right. It's interesting here that they don't uh, really understand, but at this moment, they talk about those personalizable possibilities embraced within the potential of the conjoint creation. Creator. What does personalizable mean, Roger? That's the big ticket here, Tim. At this moment of creation, it sounds like the local universe mother spirit is not fully personalized, okay? That's the point I want to make here. But because she is created as the consort or the possibility of the union of the creator son, she has the infinite spirit bestows personality on her, not the father. Isn't that interesting? That's weird. It is strange. So the they father don't even move. they don't even understand why this is. That's awkward. The, yeah. All right. Because we're taught that only the universal father is to bestow our personality, but in conjunction with the son, yes, like for to have an infinite spirit to be able to give birth to personality, that's awkward. Well, we know that the infinite spirit can give birth to the personality of what? The seven master spirits, mm -hmm. right? Remember that? And the seven master spirits are the ones that created the, the yeah. universe mother okay. spirit. Yeah. And, and in doing this, uh, the, the infinite spirit gives the, it says the potential of a local universe consorts of the paradise sun. Okay. So when a paradise sun, this new entity is automatically created and that is called the local universe mother spirit. Mm. That's the first yeah. initial paradise differentiation from the eternal son and the local universe mother spirits, right? And it happens with every single new creator sons, the same reaction happens. And this is phase one of a local universe mother spirit. You see why they broke this down in phases? All right, so this is the so, creation of a I local had a question, Roger. Spirit. Yes. You're using the word mother spirit, and to some people that may sound a little bit witchy, but is there feminine attributes? I mean, what do that's, we use that? That's why we use that term mother spirit, because she is the mother of all created beings, including all the animal life and everything else of everything in our local universe. So there's a mothering aspect to there's her. There's a mothering aspect, and that's why they call her a she. Does she have a, a form? She has a form, but it's a spiritual differentiated form. In other words, during some of these uh, training episodes or the, the steps, she is not visible 
in the sense of, that we would think of a physical body. Like a physical mother. Like a physical mother. But she becomes that when the, the creator son finishes his seventh bestowal, then she gets bestowed a physical personality. Okay? That's why this is oh. important. Roger. During her creatorship, she's more of a, what would you say, a spirit type being without form. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Right. Yeah. Yeah, Jane. What would you? Uh, would you the question I have, what do we call, do, do we call all the angels and all, <clears throat> you know, what we're talking about here, the... Um, uh, the spirits, you know, yeah, the different spirits are they all absinite? Do we call them absinite? Yeah, you could call you could call them absinite. I would, I would, I would, I don't know if I'd go that far though, Jane. I would call them more spiritual beings than absinite beings because they don't evolve. They, yes, they do, they can experience things just like we do. And that's why I would call them spiritual beings because they're more a spirit-based being than they, you would consider an absinite being. That's a different type of being, really. Okay. And okay. Is, is the mother spirit, and I'm talking about the local mother spirit. Yeah. And the creator's son. Yes. Is it the same as we know uh, the, kind of the function, the different functions between they're very different their function is very different from what a mother spirit would do and a creator some would do because yes. they don't they have, have uh, yeah they complement it that's why they call they them compliment. Compliment. yeah that each one of them has a specific function okay and they cannot create one without the other okay in other words michael could not come to this local universe and create by himself he has to have the local universe mother spirit, and that's the downstepping of the infinite spirit to be able to create the things in the local universe. All right. So it's like one always from above and yeah, within. One, one complements the other. You can't have mm -hmm. one without it. You couldn't have a local universe mother spirit creating and doing things without a Michael son. Either way. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's why they complement each other and they depend on each other. That is why, you know, one of the things they mention in the book is they have to pledge fidelity to one another. Okay, through marriage. Else? Yeah, it's a marriage. If you didn't, if they did not declare fidel uh, fidelity to one another, what would keep them from going to another creator son or another mother spirit and create with them? Because they could find another compliment, could they not? But that's why in the beginning, they pledged fidelity to one another to only work and interact with that one couple, right? Each other. Okay. So this is the basis for marriage for all creatures. Okay. That's why this is so important. All right. I was Let's wondering about that. Yeah. Thank you, Ted, because uh, I was with my religious background, which is, you know, garbage. Uh, I wonder why is there marriage? I know yeah. a couple right now that, uh, you know, they're older like me and all that stuff. Yeah. And they're living together. They made a verbal vow mm -hmm. to each other. No, nothing involved other than the, yeah. the two of them. Yeah. They're getting along fine. And I'm saying, what's wrong with that marriage? There's nothing wrong with that marriage. It's just, you know, just because you go down to the courthouse and make it legal doesn't make it any more sanctified. It doesn't. I mean, really, you can pledge yourself to another person. And really, if you think about it, when we leave this world, when I said there are coupling after you leave this world, and that's what that is, is a pledge to one another to stay together. You know, that's all it is. That's what a marriage is, right? And there's nobody that can give you that right to do that. In other words, not the preacher, not a priest, not anybody. There's no one that can say, I only have the right to marry you. That's just hogwash, garbage. You know, that's what people trying to control you. And basically, I, it's a tax on marriage. It's a tax on marriage, right? Basically.
So you either just dis- decide to uh, to commit yourself to a person through this life or you don't. That's what it boils down to. Right. OK. And people take those vows very unseriously sometimes, you know, which is sad. So seen it many times. All right. Let's go to step number two for the creative mother spirit. Step number two. Uh, Tim, would you take it? Number two, pre preliminary preliminary creatorship training. During the long period of the preliminary training of a Michael son in the organization and administration of universes, his future consort undergoes further development of entity and becomes group conscious of destiny. We do not know, but we suspect that such a group conscious entity becomes space cognizant, cognizant, and, cognizant, and begins the prelim, preliminary <laughs> training requisite to the acquirement of spirit skill in her future work of collaboration with the complemental Michael and universe creation and administration. So, step number two in her training is number one uh, to be trained in the organization and the administration of universes okay how you think they do that they watch other creative mother spirits that's done this and see what they've done right so they become uh, an entity group conscious of their destiny in other words they become group conscious of their own group of creative mother spirits so they understand start to understand what the other mother spirits are training to do and what their destiny is to do in the future right and eventually they become what's called space cognizant and what is that in other words they understand that they will be assigned a certain physical area of space to do their work And when they're assigned that space with the Michael son, they are literally bound inside that area of space and they cannot work outside that area of space. Now, why would that be? If that were not the case, then the mother spirits would be working against each other at the borders of their borders of their local universe, right? So they're they territorial. Get, they're they're territorial. territorial. That's right. And they guard that territory with everything, right? Okay. So they become space cognizant. All right. And they become, uh, they re- require, they learn their skills for the f- future work with their complement, which will be Michael in the universe creation and administration, right? So that's phase two of their training. All hey, right. Roger, I had a question. Yeah. Could you say that the word personalizable can also mean personal? Yes, it can mean personal. Okay, L- yeah. like in the Ford, right, where they're talking about super personal, pre-personal. Yes. Pre-personal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you, yeah. Personalizable, yeah. okay, yeah. 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 But what does that word mean, personalizable? In other words, you're a vehicle that can, can uh, eventually respond as a personal being. In okay, other words, you. you're prepared as a vehicle to become a personal being. You know, really, if you think about it, the thought adjusters are the same thing, aren't you? Because they're pre-personal, mm-hmm. right? right? They're prepared to become personal when we fuse with them, right? Mm-hmm. So they're a vessel entity ready for personalization. All right, number three. Uh, Gary, I think you're back up again. You get a nice short one there, Gary. <laughs> three, the stage yeah. of physical creation? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm glad it's short. Just take at, a deep breath. Time, <laughs> <laughs> at the time, the creator uh, creatorship cha- charge is administered to. Now, wait a, a minute. You're on number three. Huh? Number three, the stage of physical. Okay. I, you just missed the first part of the sentence. I wonder, where is he? Okay. I see it now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just for you, Roger. Okay. The stage oh, of physical creation. Thank at you. At the time. Hmm? Thank you. At the time the creatorship charge is administered to a Michael son by the eternal son, the master spirit who directs the super universe to which this new creator son is destined, gives expression to the 
prayer of identification in the presence of the infinite spirit and for the first time, the entity of the subsequent creative spirit appears at different, differentiated uh, from the person of the infinite spirit and proceeding directly to the person of the petitioning master spirit, this entity is immediately lost to our recognition, becoming apparently a part of the person of this master spirit, the newly identified creative spirit remains with the master spirit until the moment of the departure of the creator son for the adventures of space, where upon the master spirit commits the new spirit consort to the keepings of the creator son. At the same time, administrating to the spirit consort the charge of eternal fidelity and unending loyalty. And then occurs one of the most profoundly touching episodes which ever takes place on paradise. The universal father speaks in acknowledgement of the eternal union of the creator's son and the creative spirit and in confirmation of the bestowal of certain joint powers of administration by the master spirit of universal uh, jurisdiction. Okay. Take a deep breath. This is a big paragraph. We will do good to get through this tonight. So we're not going to finish this paper tonight, I can tell you. First of all, the first two stages of the local universe mother spirit, okay? While the local universe mother spirit is going through the first two stages, you cannot, you cannot identify her apart from the, mass, the infinite spirit, okay? She's part of the infinite spirit. Now, at this third stage, okay, and when this uh, creator sip charge is given to the Michael son, all right, there's a what they call the prayer of a dedication. And at this prayer, the infinite spirit for the first time reveals the entity of the creative mother spirit. OK, and she actually appears differentiated from the person of the infinite spirit. That's the first time she's recognized as an entity on her own. OK, so now everybody knows she's an entity on her own. OK, and then she disappears, OK, and becomes part of the master spirit in charge of that local universe, which would be whom in our case? the seventh master spirit, right? All right. And she remains with the, the seventh master spirit in our case until the moment the creator son leaves for his adventure in space to create his local universe. And at that point, that's when she goes on with the local son, right? The creator son, okay? And what's really touching about this is the acknowledgement uh, of the universal father of this union at this point, right? In other words, it's like a blessing, right? <clears throat> On the local universe creator son and the creative mother spirit, right? And in doing that, the father blesses them and gives them the power of uh, the master spirit for super universe jurisdiction over their own creation now. At that moment, what happens? Why is this so important? At that moment, Michael, the Michael son, becomes the vicegerent of whom? The universal father, right? And he will remain the vicegerent of the universal father till when? He, create, he finishes all seven bestowals, okay? And then he becomes the master of his own creation uh, on his own right, 
That's why these seven bestowals are so important, right? All right. I had so a question, Roger. Them? Go ahead, Tim. Um, I was just going to ask Roger, at the very beginning of paper 17, where it says, the seven supreme spirit groups are the universal coordinating directors of the seven segmented administration, the grand universe. What does the word, the seven segmented administration, the seven segmented, is that the seven super universes? What is the, that? The seven super universes. That's right. The seven okay. segmentations of the seven super universes. That's okay. Thank you, Roger. Sure. All right. Let's get, to, uh, I know it's seven o'clock. Let's get this last little paragraph so we can start on number four next time. Um, I'll just read it real quick. The, the Father United Creator Son and the Creative Spirit then go forth on their adventure of universe creation. And they work together in this form of association throughout the long and arduous period of the material organization of their universe. So this is where the, the Father United, the married Creator Son with the Creative Spirit goes forth on their universe creation, right? What a beautiful concept, right? And that goes through the third portion of the uh, Creative Mother Spirit, and we'll get the others next time. So let's have a little prayer, and we will quit for tonight. Um, Gary, would you like to pray for us tonight? Again, get yes. me. I should never yeah. show up early. <laughs> That's right. That's what you get for showing up early. Me and Eagle, eager, right? <laughs> you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Jesus, help us understand this and make it so that we can understand it. Use our present circumstances so we can reflect create a, a medium between the two as a understanding teaching tool help us to go forward in your simple directions of loving the father and doing unto others that we would have them do unto uh, you us and keep that foremost in our minds all the time Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Amen. And thank thank you, you at home for joining us. Please come and see us again. Uh, we love your comments online. It's, it's really amazing sometimes. We will see everybody next time. Stop. Jane, I know.